Hey everyone, it's Petra from Petra Fisher Movement, and I'm here with an introductory series on how to make sitting on the floor work better for your body. Floor sitting, sometimes called ground living, is a really awesome way to add more movement to your daily life. What it gives you is a lot of up and down movement, which builds muscle mass and increases your metabolism. It gives you more movement variety for your hips, knees, ankles, toes, and even your upper body. And that means more health. Our bodies love variety. It helps you fidget more. Fidgeting is actually a great thing for your body. Sitting in one place and being very still can be quite damaging. And um, it actually helps promote core strength and pelvic floor health as well, because when you sit on the floor in an unsupported way, you can actually really have to use your core and pelvic floor in ways that you don't have to necessarily sitting in a chair. So floor sitting, AKA ground living has numerous benefits. That's awesome if you are already quite mobile and strong and it's not much of an adjustment. But the truth is many of us have been quite adapted to chairs for a long time and that can be a real barrier. So when I asked my people on Facebook and Instagram what their barriers were to ground living floor sitting, I got three answers. So number one was strength. So just too hard to get up from or down to the ground. Number two was discomfort, so feeling like their low back was hurting or they had to slouch a lot. And number three was mobility, uh, not necessarily in that order. Also things like pets and children get mentioned. <laughs> I can't help you with pets and children, uh, but I can help you with the strength, mobility, and uh, comfort pieces, and that's what this series is all about. So without further ado, let's get started, and let's start by looking at floor sitting strength. There are about a kajillion ways that you could get up and down from the floor. And I'm gonna break it down today uh, by using a technique called the prone get up in the world of MoveNat. Um, I'm sure there's many other names for it, but it's a good starting point. And I'm gonna show you from the ground first. So not that hopefully, well, I, I don't care if you lie on the ground or not, but often you won't have to start at the ground. But if you were to start lying down, this technique would start with your hands in front of you. And then you bring your hands up to your shoulders and you push yourself up into a hands and knees quadruped position. And then you keep pushing yourself, oops, my bolster's in the way, until you can simply get up. So it's a compound movement. To come down, I hinge, I reach, my knees come down, and then if I wanna go all the way down to the floor, I walk myself out. So let's break this down a little bit by strength. And we're gonna start from the top, because when you start from the top, you don't have to deal with the hardest part, which is just getting up off the floor. So the very first move to work on is a hinge. Hinging is something I teach a lot in many places, and you can definitely check out other videos on that, but let's go over it. So when you hinge backwards and bend your knees at the same time, what we're looking for is a fairly vertical shin here. So your knees can come forward. It's not the end of the world if they do, but it's not what we're going for in this particular exercise. So what I'd like you to think about, and you can certainly use a chair as a bit of a, what's a, a special biofeedback tool. You can start with your knees on your chair and then you can just fold at the hips, stick your butt back, and then you're already in this beautiful hinge. Please notice I'm not doing a lot of back rounding and I'm not doing a lot of rib thrusting. It's just a straight back hinge. And if you want some practice on this, I actually have a workshop on building a squat where I focus a lot on this particular movement. So you can always check that out. So this is number one, make sure you've got a hinge and you can practice just this exercise 10 times a day, 20 times a day and start building strength that way already. Now I cleverly have my chair in front of me already because when you're starting to work on getting down a little lower, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hinge and put your hands on your chair and hang out here if you like. And then to get back up, you can give yourself a little bit of a hand assist, feel, your butt and hamstrings working to pull you up. So it's reaching back, hinging back, coming down to the chair, maybe even bending your elbows to go a little lower, and then you can press into your hands, straighten your arms, and use that push to come back up. So maybe this is your exercise. You don't need to go any further if this is a challenging movement for you, because this is where you build strength. So you stop at the exercise where you feel like the strength 
requirement is something that you could work on. So I'm hinging forward, I'm reaching down, I'm there, I can do that. I'm now bending my elbows, coming down, and then pressing back up. And maybe you do that 10, 20 times a day for the next two or three weeks, and that's a great place to work, like so. And here you're really starting to build some great strength. You could certainly um, choose a lower surface next. So as you start to build your strength, you're going to be getting closer and closer to what we'd be doing on the floor. And I have all these piles of yoga blocks. You could certainly use whatever you have around. There's no magic to, um, to changing the height of your surface. But the, the idea is the same. So you're hinging back, reaching down, starting to take more weight on your upper body, but not all the way because we already know this is also your legs pushing back up. So butt reaches out, knees hinge, hands reach for your surface, elbows bend to lower you, elbows straighten to lift. And look, now you're basically doing a push-up, so that's awesome. And you can do that, again, as many times as you need to to start building that strength. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually switch to kneeling. So I've got my bolster here. If your knees are not okay with kneeling, uh, then there's a lot of other work that you can do to help your legs, your knees be more okay with kneeling. I think a good place to start for, you know, that mobility and sensation piece is with controlled articular rotations or CARS, which is a practice you do every day to build your mobility and to start kind of feeling better right away. So if this is too much for your knees, I would actually divert and start working on CARS and then come back to this and keep working on the strength piece. So here, I've got my kneeling, I've got my surface. This is another place you might find you need a little bit of extra help because I'm asking for a lot from your toes here. Your toes have to be bent uh, behind you for this particular exercise. And if that's not okay for your toes, now you know toe mobility is your next step forward. And yes, there can be a lot of steps in regaining mobility and that's okay because it's a journey, and each piece of the journey is going to give you access to more capacity. My Free Your Feet program will help you with your toe mobility. So here now we're kind of bending forward. We can be pretty close to the chair. I might be a little bit far here. Bending forward. I'm pushing into the chair. I'm lifting my knees up. I'm coming up to standing, like so. And to get down, I'm going to hinge, I'm going to reach for the chair, I'm going to lower my knees down to my bolster. This bolster could be higher also. So feel free to bolster as much as you possibly can. There's zero shame in bolstering. It is great for your body to do. So here, I'm hinging forward, I'm pushing with my hands, I'm coming up, all the way up. So it's a lot of upper body strength, right? There's no shame to using your upper body to come down to the floor. Although all those tests are like, no hands, no hands. There's value to that, but let's start with what we can do. So we are leaning forward, pushing, pulling our knees back into our hinge, coming all the way up. So maybe you stop here and you do that 10, 20 times a day. You're going to build a lot of strength doing that. And here we're very close to the full get up. So let's try this with maybe a couple of blocks. Here we're in quadruped, we're pressing up and just coming up to standing like so. So coming down, quadruped, and we're pushing with our hands, we're rolling backwards a little bit, coming back up all the way down, hands come to our blocks, pushing backwards into our hinge, coming up, coming down into our quadruped, pushing up, coming back up. And you're gonna see, I mean, you can hear, I'm starting to work here because it's a lot of work to lift your body. So here again, you've got your interim step. And so by now, we're pretty close to the whole kit and caboodle, the whole darn thing. So now, maybe you're starting in quadruped, you walk your hands back to where you need to, you use blocks if you need to, you roll yourself up, you push and you press up. Hands come down, I'll show you with blocks. Knees come down, you're in your quadruped. Move your blocks as much as you need to, push yourself up, all the way up, boom. Beautiful work. Hands come down, you're in your quadruped. 
and soon you're gonna be able to lose the blocks, or maybe you're not, because who cares? If the blocks are helping you and you're getting to the floor, that's amazing. So it's gonna look like that. You're coming up, you're pulling your knees back into your hinge, you're right back to the hinge, pushing up like so. You come down, hands go to the ground, they help you get your knees down. And then if you want to do the whole thing, you can come down to your forearms, wiggle your way down, and start from lying down. But I am hoping that most of you are using this to get to the floor so that you can sit on the ground for more of your daily activities like eating or preparing food or watching television. So you may not want to actually lie down on the ground for this. So there you go. That's the prone get up, strength building approach. Start top down. Take as much time as you need. Use as many cushions and bolsters as you need. And if your barrier is toe mobility, knee mobility, hip mobility, then you want to go and do cars instead. Maybe take my squat program. Maybe take my joints for life program. Those are ways you can work on those mobility pieces and then come back to the sitting with a few more skills. So that's the strength piece. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to bolster to sit on the floor, which is game changing for your low back and your core. Okay, see you soon.